And so, ta-da, there we are. The engine is now all finished, all uh, ready go, to go back to its uh, owner. Uh, happy with it. It's all looking good. And so, uh, you know, time to think about the uh, think about the rebuild and what that sort of meant. Well, to begin with, uh, this engine came in, and uh, when I looked at it, um, it's got no uh, no proper engine number. Well, it's it's got an engine number, but it's not got a date on it. And it turns out we think that this is a replacement engine. So the bike it came from is a 72 Trident, I believe. But I'd say this engine is a, a later engine, much later engine, 74 maybe, I don't know, um, because it's got some uh, of features uh, of the later engines that we then used on the T160. Um, so it would seem to be a replacement engine. So for some reason, the original engine needed replacing. So that's one engine gone. Then, as I started to rebuild this, I discovered that this has had uh, major major damage there's signs of a conrod uh obviously this time inside conrod by the look of it having snapped and come through the uh come through the case i'm trying to think where else there is some evidence of that but um yeah so that gives us some idea i'm afraid of the uh, sort of fragility if you like of a trident engine you know this is the second engine and this one's had a conrod snap on it so there we go. Anyway, um, so it came it came in and originally the owner brought it in because it, it was leaking oil badly and smoking badly. So they wanted a top end rebuild. But then halfway through, when, when we got the head off on that, after some discussion, it was decided to go for a full rebuild. Now, the thing about that is that I don't think people realize what a massive massive increase in work that meant people said oh well you got the head and barrels off you know you might as well take, take do the rest now <clears throat> but you know just doing the rest uh, I would say the way we've done it <clears throat> is sort of increased the work by probably 10 times I mean seriously mainly because you've got to take everything apart but having taken it apart the decision was naturally made to blast clean all the engine cases, barrel and head and so on, and then have the outer cases highly polished, as you would do. The problem with that is that in order to have everything blast cleaned, everything has to come apart. So you don't just take the engine apart. You have to take the engine apart and then remove every last bearing, seal, bolt, whatever, that's actually in the cases has got to be removed ready to take it down to be blasted and you've got to clean all that horrible gasket goo off and stuff it takes it's, it's labor intensive then when the cases come back they've got to be washed and then washed again and then washed again and then washed again and then preferably washed again because that blast media as it's called you know probably little small glass beads or whatever it just gets everywhere everywhere and uh, and obviously, you know, it's designed as a coarse you know, cleaning medium. So if any of that, those grains are left in the engine, it's just a nightmare. It's just going to wear the engine out straight away. So you've got to get it clean. So it, it adds, you know, I can't say how much more work there was in doing the rest of the engine rather than just doing the head and the barrels and so on. And so um, bear in mind that. Now, we also fitted electronic ignition and uh, ha ha it had to be rebored. There was quite a lot of engineering work went on, it had to be rebored, so that meant new pistons. Uh, also, we had the clutch machine, but we had the head skimmed, we had the barrel skimmed, we had new valve guides, and we had new valves and springs, and all that kind of adds up. And then the blast cleaning and so on, electronic ignition. Uh, so the whole engine altogether, you're looking north in terms of cost of £4,000. Now, I would say if you didn't polish and blast clean the engine, 
you could probably even get that you get that down to three thousand straight away. That's in terms of myself doing it because uh, that four thousand pounds obviously includes uh, my labour, um, but it's quite labour intensive. You know, in prepping the cases, ready for blast cleaning, then then cleaning them all. You have to oh, you have to tap all the threads out. Of course, there's something like 150 threads that need tapping out because again, that blast medium gets in all the threads. Now, yes, I would have checked the threads anyway, but after it's blast cleaned, it is twice, three times, five times more difficult to clean a thread. You have to use a tap because that blast medium does get down inside, even if you sealed the uh, threads off um so uh what have we done it's all pretty standard it's been reboard um and then thanks to lumberjack we've had the clutch machine and that's got a thicker wider clutch plate on um the uh, t160 i did last year that's now up and running and the clutch is uh nice and light and smooth on that you know it's still not the lightest clutch in the world but it's by no means the heaviest and uh, it's good, so I would definitely recommend fitting a lot the um, thicker clutch plate to try and make the action a bit lighter. Uh, and that's what we did on this. Uh, we've got electronic ignition. I think uh, apart from that, pretty standard. We re replaced the uh, all the main bearings and uh, the big end bearings and so on. Uh, all the oil seals, all the oil seals, obviously, and some some bearings, etc. I think the gearbox is pretty, uh, didn't do much to that. Uh, I think, yeah, one of the forks, one of the um, selector forks was worn, so we replaced that. But, you know, parts, they, they can eat so easily add up for these. Um, you know, I think it was like, I don't know. It was a lot just for a selector fork, wasn't it, 70 quid or something? I'm, I can't remember. I'm, that might be an exaggeration, but, you know, you start buying a few parts, it really adds things up. Yeah, so I think the main thing of note is how much more work there was in rebuilding the whole engine. You know, by the time you're taking the head off and the barrels, you think, well, that's half the engine done. Well, it's not, it's, it's a lot less than half, especially because you've got all the, all the primary chain case to take off and the clutch and the, and the shock absorber, and then you've got all the timing gear and, and so on. Uh, and the alternator, et cetera, et cetera, and then the entire gearbox. But the main, the main thing that increased the work was indeed having all the, car the, the cases um you know blast clean but you know when, when you have taken it apart you think well you might as well do it which makes perfect sense but be aware you know that's uh it's not cheap even if even if you do things yourselves i mean so i think the, the polishing of the cases was about a hundred pounds that was machine polished the blast cleaning they charged 300 pounds now uh, I was talking to uh, David Walklin, I think he's in New Zealand, and he runs a, a small blast cleaning business. And he says, ideally, bring the engine down in one piece before you take it apart, and then I, and I'll blast clean it before you take it apart. Now, I'm thinking now that that's a very, very good idea because it stops any bits getting inside the engine. And then you don't have to take everything completely apart, you know, to take it down to the blast cleaners. And you're not worried about bits getting in the engine. They might get in, you'll, obviously you'll seal things off, but they might get in the combustion chamber, the minus too much. But with the engine out, I think the only orifices, as you speak, is the um, uh, oil, the, the oil pipes there. It's the only way that uh, grit can get in the engine. So I think it's a good idea. Obviously the problem is, oh, well, obviously down the taco driver can get down there as well. Um, I think the problem with that is obviously you've got one big heavy engine to take down and get someone to blast clean. But if you could do that and they agree to do it, that's probably a good idea. You might have a problem with the um, uh, push rod tubes uh, getting, getting um, damaged uh, with the blast clean, but they're not that expensive. So that would certainly be an option, I'd say. Take the whole engi in engine down. It, it, uh, there's pros and cons to it but it's certainly an option because there's so much work involved in taking everything apart and completely stripping it cleaning it you have to clean it before taking it for blast cleaning you know they're not going to take some oily horrible greasy thing from you that, that, that simply won't do it right uh, but you know i'm pleased with it the, the owners uh come and pick it up in a few days and and hopefully we'll have a, a lovely engine um yeah we fitted a composite 
I, as I normally do, composite head gasket and composite um, rocker box gaskets, which I find work and don't leak generally. I've got a very slight leak now on my T160 five years. It's been running five years, so I've got a slight leak from one of the rocker boxes. Anyway, on this, uh, the real downside, I think, to composite gaskets is you have to retort them. Again, I got that uh, quite, quite uh, say, three times, retort them three times. That, that T16 I did last year, I've just retorked the head. I think that's the second time I've retorked the head. And again, it needed quite a bit. So you need to retort the head immediately after starting, then after about 50 miles, then maybe after 100 or 150 miles, and that should be it. But it does need to be done. And the problem with that is you need to do, really need to do the tappets at the same time, which are a bit of a faff. You have to, you know, every time you have to keep, you know, because obviously talking it down, it tends to squeeze things together and so tends to close up the tappets. Uh, okay, but uh, yeah, I'm very pleased uh, with this, the way this has uh, turned out. And I hope the owner is, I'm, I'm sure there will be, and I hope it uh, all, all goes well. Uh, of course, the other problem is you're never 100% sure until the things in the you know, actually running, but uh, you know, mechanically, I think uh, I think we're fine. Anyway, there we are, job done, and getting ready now to go on to the next job, which is this Norville Norton Commando. So this is a a, a Norton Commando a, like built from scratch by Norville. Um, about 10 years ago so they, they got all the the, the the parts and they just built a, a new bike and it's got all the upgrades it's got um amazing upgrades in the engine beefed up starter motor stainless steel throughout alloy rims up rated brakes it's got oh, electronic ignition up rated electrics etc etc it's got all the uh, options on it so we're going to be doing that next because it was made, built about 10 years ago. The chap who'd ordered it, took delivery, rode it down to France, apparently, decided when he got to France he didn't like it, and uh, put it in his uh, in his shed for 10 years. So it's just been sitting there. It's got 900 miles on the clock from new. But, you know, it's just suffered, you know, that's, uh, you know, the headlamp shell, completely rusty. The, the whole thing, it just needs recommissioning. You know, it's okay. It's just um, pretty, pretty filthy all around. It's just literally been sitting in the shed for 10 years. So, you know, we just got to uh, recommission it like a full service, really. <coughs> uh, <coughs> put new tires on it and things like that. Because even though they're brand new tires, they're, you know, they're 10 years old. So looking forward to doing that. Anyway, <gasps> one last look at that engine because it's so nice. There we go. We get the rest of it there. That's a nice picture, I think. Yeah. yeah. Because it's on the bench, I can't really do the best, best, best picture of it, but I think we get the idea. <laughs> 